Welcome everybody to this uh, new uh, lecture of our uh, Open Science course. Today we are joined by uh, Carlo Piana, who is uh, a lawyer, attorney at law uh, in Italy, and uh, he is uh, uh, one of the greatest European uh, uh, free software advocates uh, and uh, in general, free culture in general. Uh, he is uh, uh, external general counsel to the Free Software Foundation Europe, uh, and uh, he has uh, uh, been involved uh, in uh, a number of uh, important cases uh, in um, EU Commission uh, and uh, uh, in Italy as well. Um, today he will talk about uh, uh, licensing options for code and data and more, and uh, we are really excited to having him and uh, looking forward to hearing. Carlo, thank you very much for joining. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for having me. It's the second time I'm here speaking to um, precisely this audience, but speaking to these uh, events. So it's, uh, I hope next time uh, we will, can do something in presence without the encumbrances of COVID lockdowns and traveling impediments and so on and so forth. So uh, without much further ado, uh, thank you for the introduction. That was uh, excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak on open, open source, open license in general, and, uh, and especially on licenses. And what are the tools that uh, we lawyers have conceived to make uh, the, the life of developers, writers, authors, as miserable as possible, because that is the task of lawyers, making everybody's life more complicated. Uh, actually, it is not like, it's not the true, but uh, some lawyers has done a lot of, uh, of mess uh, in the previous years, and so we are now here to fix it and to hang the system in order for people to make uh, uh, more free content available to everybody without um, paying too much attention and without uh, too many uh, impediments to the free flow of culture in cultural artifacts and so on, and, and science uh, in general. So uh, let's start with uh, some very basic high level recap of where we are with where we are at. So people say uh, we have intellectual property, but actually this is not true. Uh, there is no such a thing as intellectual property. This is a general collective name for many different subjects which have that many different uh, rules. So we always have to understand that we, when we say cop uh, copyright, very marks, the patents uh, and stuff, we are speaking on very different subjects. Sometimes they have interaction, but most of the time they have very different uh, characteristics. So uh, that is one complication. So uh, let's try to be as precise as possible when we speak of uh, intellectual property. Uh, uh, they have something in common though. They are negative rights. They're, they cannot give anything. They can just take freedom out of people. So uh, in, in nature, uh, of course, there is no such thing as intellectual property in nature. In nature, you are free to do whatever you want. Uh, if you see a picture in nature, you, have, you are uh, uh, welcome to, uh, you, you are able to replicate it. Or if you see something, somebody doing something, you can replicate that thing. That is what is exists in nature. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, intellectual property is a creation of uh, of the law. So uh, for many reasons, which is difficult, is too long to explain, they, we have some rights that uh, give somebody some negative rights, which is the right to exclude somebody else from doing, to, uh, doing certain things. And by giving these rights, this right to exclude, you also have a right to waive, to, uh, to give permission. On, uh, on these rights. Um, this is where licenses leave. So this is a very quick list of, of the various intellectual property rights that are, uh, exist now. Copyright, patents, 
uh, trademarks, trade secrets, and database rights. Uh, we are dealing mostly with copyright and with patents, uh, especially when we speak about software. Uh, software is also covered by trade secret, by, by, by the way. Uh, for, um, for artistic, for cre creative works like uh, articles, uh, pictures, and drawings, we speak about uh, copyright mainly. So this, this is one big difference because software is mainly covered by copyright, but it has a utilitarian uh, uh, value. It, it's valuable because it's useful, whereas uh, articles, uh, pictures are valuable because they say something, they transmit concepts, but you cannot do anything with articles apart from reading or picture apart from looking at them. Okay. So uh, we speak firstly and chiefly about software because uh, when we speak of openness in these rights, software has uh, the most complex history and provides the largest gamut of uh, complications. So uh, once we have grasped on software, we are better off with everything else. But uh, although speaking of software gives us some insights on licensing, some idea, it's a it's a good training area. You should not make a mistake that many do, uh, even experts or soi disant experts in licensing, because what works in software not necessarily works in other places. And trying to transform the same good things that we have developed so far in software, not necessarily is a good idea to redo the same thing on other fields. Uh, that's, that's, that's very important, especially, uh, I have noticed that and I'm strongly advising against for uh, open data and open hardware, for instance. So bear in mind. Uh, as I say, for scientific software and science at large, these are uh, the, uh, the, the, the main, um, areas where you have to look at and to be careful. But copyright is most definitely uh, a part if you want to, to patent your invention, copyright is the most important. In the, sec in the second, uh, second uh, rank, I would, uh, would give uh, database rights in the place where they exist, because this is something which is very special to the uh, European Union. It, oh, and and uh, they also exist, of course, in, in, in UK pre-Brexit, but in other places they are, um, they're also existing by tweaking, uh, sort of tweaking the copyright protection. And one very important thing that we need to, uh, to understand, especially because, uh, well, as I said, uh, um, uh, usually people think that patents don't, do not cover software. Uh, the, the diverse is true. Um, since uh, years 2000, uh, companies have started, and universities, alas, have started patenting software uh, by and large, very successfully. Now, the, the, highest, the, uh, the highest trend in patenting is exactly on software, not just in USA, but in Europe as well. And Switzerland is no exception, and Japan and Australia. So it's, it's very common. So it's a, a common concept copyright uh, patents don't cover software it's simply wrong but um, the main difference that uh, for copyright uh, in order to be infringing copyright you have to copy something to have to take it almost literally and otherwise you're not infringing anything with patents this is much more uh, difficult to assess because First, for one, you don't uh, you don't exactly know what what the patent uh, covers, and uh, and on the other hand, uh, the main uh, difference is that copyright only cover not the idea but the way the idea ex is expressed, the way the way the idea is is uh, put in practice, the implementation. Whereas patent covers anything in which uh, which. Uh, uh, results a technical problem. However, this is uh, implemented in, in software. So 
this is one of the main uh, differences that need to be uh, taken uh, into, into consideration. So the fact that patents don't cover uh, software is today laughable. So uh, this is to give you a very general and very basic uh, recap of some of the, main, the most important concepts. So, uh, the, but the most important concept is a license is a permission. Okay, so uh, uh, the first, um, uh, the, the, the contrary to what exists in nature, in today's legal system, the quote unquote natural thing is that if you do, if you write something, if you write software, if you write a, a novel, if you write an article, if you write, if you take a picture and publish on the internet, the uh, default, even if you are not willing, the default situation is all rights are reserved. So if you say, if you see an artifact on the internet, if you uh, see uh, some artifact in the library and you don't see uh, the licensing conditions attached to it, you must assume uh, this thing cannot be touched. You can read it, but you cannot copy, you cannot modify it, you cannot, uh, by all means, you cannot redistribute uh, it. Most of the time, software comes with tags attached, a licensing condition. And usually, this in a proprietary word, this is called EULA. EULA uh, is a end user license agreement. This is the, the way software uh, used to be licensed in the 80s, 90s, and still today. So, uh, proprietary software with uh, a copyright license that sells. Uh, says you cannot do basically anything. If, if, if you weigh all your rights, you must give me your uh, first go and so on if you violate the copyright. That's, that's the situation. Um, but so, uh, rights can be sold in two ways uh, other than the end user. You can just give up your rights and transfer to somebody else. This is one kind of license, which is uh, a sell-off. But the third way to make uh, to, to give people the right to use and, and, and copy and modify it is by saying loudly and publicly uh, this software, this article, this picture, this movie, this whatever is under this condition. It's a public license. It's a promise. It's a, it's a statement to make not to Carlo, not to Francesco, but to everybody that these are the condition under which you can do the thing that you uh, you want to do okay so uh we always we call this open source but open source is a, again is a vague name no, actually it's a precise name but but it's a collective name for uh, some permission that you invariably need to have so if you say oh it's open source because you can see the source that is not uh that is not open source uh in order to be open source you need to find some cer certain uh, permission uh the permission to use the software the permission to study and change the software so and that re requires that you can see the source code um, the, the right to distribute copies, so you take and pass it on, and the right to touch it, to modify it, and not just for your own use, but for, uh, for giving it onto others. This is uh, what you need to look in, in, into a license. If a license doesn't have these basic rights, then it's not, not open source. And use the software by using the software for any possible purposes, not just for uh, your own personal and non-commercial, or you cannot use it, it for uh, military purposes. That is not open source anymore. But actually, these are the four liberties. So, so I trick you. These are not the, this is not the definition of open source. These are the four liberties uh, uh, written down by Richard Stallman founder of the Free Software Foundation. And these are the four liberties of free software. This is one complication. If you hear some, some even me, some, sometimes say open source or free software, they are the same thing, but just they have different definitions. So 
These are definitions of for free software, for a bit of free software. Actually, you find a, a precise, more precise and in 10 rules, in 10 rules, uh, definition of what is open source in the open source definition. And there is a link, you can go there and you see a list of approved licenses. So technically speaking, if you say it's open source, uh, in order to say it's open source, it must be under one of these approved licenses. Otherwise, you are in, in a more shitty situation. This is not authoritative, authoritative uh, by law. It's just the rule of the trade. Yeah, that is a common name. If you say something different, you might, you might be tricking others into thinking something which is not true. Okay. Of course, licensing is important. It's, without the license, there is no open source. And the end of the story, because because without license you are in a proprietary field. Full stop. But this is just one necessary uh, condition, but not sufficient for being open source because we have different degrees of open source. And we, if, if if you want to have the full um, uh, scope of open source, you should uh, also consider. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, how the software is created, if by one single entity or company or person, or by a, uh, a community, many people working on it. How it's distributed, uh, under which license, of course, how it is maintained by one single company, by nobody, or by a community, a healthy community. That provides different value in open source. The more it's distributed, the more uh, is uh, maintained by different people. Sorry. And uh, of course, uh, it, it, if in practice, it can be used, modified and studied because it, it, it can be limited to one particular uh, uh, apparatus or it can be uh, uh, of general application. And there are other, uh, other conditions that I am not. Uh, taking to in, 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 I'm not explaining for lack of time. So, oh, uh, now concentrate more on licenses. Uh, the first thing that we, uh, if you if you, if you are not just a user but a user and a developer of software, you need to understand that. Uh, well, first of all nobody writes software in isolation. Everybody uses, reuses, rehashes things like libraries, already existing software, snippets, samples and stuff. So uh, you need to, uh, to uh, when you take some code, you, you need the very first thing, uh, look at the license. What license this software is under? Uh, licenses, we will see very shortly, uh, have names, labels, because the, uh, they are um, widespread. So, uh, and, and by just the names, most of the time you can understand what lies, what conditions are attached to it. Uh, and this condition is what we call inbound. So the condition that are constraining us, because yeah, as I said, uh, you, give the, you, you receive permissions, but you must comply with this uh, permission. And so inbound software, inbound licenses, okay? Uh, whereas when you distribute software outside to the, to the outer world, the, your uh, license or licenses of a choice are called the outbound licenses. So inbound and outbound license and outbound must be, uh, uh, must be working together because uh, in copyright, one of the most important words to be uh, uh, aware of is derivative. If I take software and I, I, I make a modification or put some software into some larger software, and sometimes if I link two pieces of a software together so they form one single entity at, at runtime or at build time, I have a derivative. And the derivative must comply with uh, all the licenses of the incoming, of the inbound software. So, uh, and this is why you need, need to take care of, uh, of what, uh, what license the software is under, because otherwise you can fail on uh, these conditions. And the basic tenet is that uh, you need this permission in order to, come to uh, benefit from the liberties, because otherwise you're falling back to all rights reserved. Okay. Uh, 
this is for something I have said, but re let me restate it's 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 exactly uh, it's it's not not magic. Conditions mean precisely what condition means in, in general. You comply, you have the right. You don't comply, you don't have the right. You comply, you are licensed. You don't comply, you're not licensed. You're not uh, made or everything that's required for, for, for benefiting from the license. So uh, people say, is this copyleft? No, this is not already copyleft. Uh, all licenses have conditions. It's not required to be copyleft to um, to be to be subject to some condition actually the first licenses in software that are still today around are licenses from academy from university bsd mat are software distribution licenses and they're non copyleft but they require that you make an attribution uh disclaim the the liability and uh and avoid from using the uh, the name of the university as your uh, uh, as a trademark as a uh, some kind of endorsement. These are very basic, but they still exist. Copyleft is something more, and dealing with copyleft is a little bit more complicated than with these simple licenses. We call these licenses like the academic, not bearing any any consequences on the outbound software. We call them non copyleft, but copyleft is a kind is a special condition that the inbound software imposes on the outbound software and uh, one of these conditions or maybe it's invariable the condition is that inbound software and the outbound the inbound license and the outbound license must be the same sometimes uh, the uh, the licenses uh, permit you to use another license as a dial bound. But the, the basic rule of copyleft is I take something under one condition, under one license, the outbound must be on the same license. Sometimes you can change it later. Sometimes somebody else can permit you to change this license, but this is the basic rule of copyleft. Um, the other most important definition uh, that we need to, to, to make this distinction is strong or weak copyleft. In some, some cases, we call it file or extensive copyleft, copyleft. So depending on the scope of the license of the copyleft, it can be um, extending only to the, the verify. It can be most of the time is a library, especially a linked library. Uh, if it's a weak copyleft, uh, only the changes to the licenses, what you make of that file, are uh, subject to the inbound equals outbound license. But the rest, you can embed it, incorporate it into something which can have a different license, even a proprietary one. So. Uh, this is why we copyleft are more for software that needs to be by its nature reused in other software like libraries, which these, um, the reason why this has been conceived in the first place was for making the GNU CC libraries available and not having them under the license, the, the, the GPL license by the free software. We come to that in a second. So as I said, uh, you need to comply, and and, and 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 there is a rule by which you have inbound license and outbound license. They can these can uh, create incompatibilities. So if we take conditions which are reciprocally incompatible, so you cannot just mix and match everything because if some conditions say, oh, the outbound must be license A. And the others say, oh, the outbound must be license B. It cannot be the same at the same time. So you have uh, a impossible to resolve condition uh, unless you go get back and require and request a different uh, licensing from the copyright holder or holders. Um, if the copyright is distributed, that means many people. So it's nearly impossible. So one, you have made this choice and especially when the, the, the software has taken up, the project is taken up, it's very difficult to come back. There are tools, but that's 
higher level, not, not this lesson. We call this thing making sure that everything comes together and fits together and what it's in equals what it's out. We call it compliance. So compliance is one of the most difficult things to, to achieve, especially when you move from simple project to large project to very complex project, especially in the industry, because there you have uh, huge fines, huge penalties, complication costs and compliance. It's very, very important. So this is an introduction. Uh, this is uh, laying down the problem, what you need to make sure you are doing. Uh, you are uh, reading licenses and get busy knowing what can go with what else. Uh, the, 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 the great rule is if in the inbound there is non-copyleft, the outbound can be everything. If it's weak copyleft, the outbound can be mostly everything but for the file. If the inbound is copyleft, the outbound must be the copyleft license. This is why there are many, oh, this is one reason why there are many non-copyleft licenses, a handful of good uh, weak copyleft licenses and practically only three uh, we, uh, strong copyleft licenses and all of them are from the Free Software Foundation, basically. There are variants, variations of that, but this is the, the spectrum. Uh, I'm making your life simpler uh, by giving you some rationale and rules for picking up a license. Because, and because, that, of course, that depends on what software you want to make and what uh, software you want to take in. But the software selection is already based on what is possible. Okay. So the principles, of course, the first and I'm told here, but you must comply with copyright because the alternative is uh, not pleasant. But uh, you have, uh, you're doing software and other uh, stuff. You need not to reinvent the wheel. Stick to something existing for a number of reasons. Uh, the first thing you cannot outsmart the very smart lawyers, including me, that have invented and have created these licenses. Second, because you are benefiting from the analysis already done by others on these particular licenses. This is important to have a name attached to the license and not to read through uh, 20 pages of legal jargon that is impossible to parse for a human being. Second, do not proliferate, which means do not, do not reinvent the wheel, but do not go and, and select the obscure license from nowhere that nobody uses. So proliferation is a big problem because legal text is complex and knowing what's in legal text is complex. If you take, uh, if you step outside the 90% the uh, uh, of software, uh, the, the software, the license that cover 90% of the software around, you would find into problem. So pick up the most popular one and forget the rest. Okay. Uh, and of course, you must uh, select the software and the licenses for what you expect. Because that's, that's what I said before. Uh, and this is a solution. And, uh, usually lawyers don't give you a solution. This is a cheat sheet. So this is uh, the list of licenses for which I am, from which I am choosing. So I'm in 99% of cases, I will pick up and suggest one of the licenses. Strong copyleft, a GPL of GPL. A GPL is more, even more complicated because uh, oh, A GPL is basically for software that is used in network environments. So software in cloud, basically, okay? So you have your cloud software and you want to control and, 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 and try and, and avoid that your software becomes, uh, gets used by others without uh, respecting your choice of freedom. AGPL is one viable choice. Otherwise, GPL. G GPL is the license from the Free Software Foundation, is the one which has invented, in the first place, copyleft. So that is 
And, and, and by the way, is nearly the only strong copyleft license used. The complication is that you have V3 and V2. Uh, V3 is, was born in 1990, sorry, in 2007. Uh, it also has some more tweaked language, it's more accurate, but on the other hand, it is incompatible with V2, so you cannot combine them two together, and the V2, V2 is still the most popular. So uh, technically, I would say V3, on practical terms, perhaps V2 is, was more, uh, is more appropriate, although it's, it's uh, outdated. Uh, but this, this is the end of the story look no further. For lesser or weak copyleft, maybe you want your software to be uh, still free software and, and you want to receive, um, and maybe it's, it's a library, uh, ILGPL. So it's the lesser version, is the weak copyleft version of GPL that I have mentioned before, or Mozilla. These are the two most popular, okay? And they are most understood and, and better written. Again, the LGPL, you have V2 and V3. So that's, that's another complication as well. And uh, if you, there is a trend probably today to choose non-copyleft. This is like, like a pendulum is winging back together. So that's this, um, and this is just a description of what is happening. It's not that I endorse one or the other. But um, if you choose non-copyleft, I would not use anything but Apache. First, a rank it for first is modern. It has patent a, a, a provision on patents, which is important because uh, it's not open source. It, if somebody has a patent on it and can uh, take your freedom out of your hands, uh, whereas BSD is very simple, uh, MIT is also very simple, um, but uh, it's it's very it's it's maybe too simple. And it's too basic and it's outdated. It dates back to the 60s. So it's not up, up to times. But do not go any further. Okay, this is just, just a very, very quick. Uh, uh, the entirety of this course will take like 15 to 20 hours. And so I've condensed everything to just give you just a glimpse of what uh, licensing is and, 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 and in practical terms, what you need to choose from. And why? The same concepts of software apply to non-software content. So first question, can I use those licenses for something which is not software? No, forget about it. Software and non-software, you can use the same concepts, but not the same language because they are different beasts. Software is utilitarian, you remember, and, and, non, and, and creative content is creative content or a data on data okay so uh for non uh, software so creative uh software uh, creative subjects like writings pictures movies music whatever creative commons is the go-to go -to solution there are many licenses maybe less than in software fewer than in software but uh, Creative Commons is by and large the most used license for creative content. It, it builds on the experience. Lauren Lessig, the author, uh, is building, was building upon the experience of, uh, of, copy, of, of copyright licenses in software, but it's designed to things which are not software. Uh, actually, we say Creative Commons licensees, plural, because uh, uh, we have different kinds of Creative Commons. Uh, they works with modules, to, so to speak. So um, they, uh, they go with uh, general conditions applicable to a, a, the subject. Uh, the first is invariably by. By means you must provide attribution. It's more than that, but just up for your mnemonic uh, sake, by means attribution. So uh, when you reuse or re enhance something, you must preserve the attribution the way the author has made it 
and you can add your own, but you must preserve. Uh, there are there is a list of things you have, need to preserve. But buy is very simple, so it's is equivalent of no copyleft. Everything free. Go ahead, make my day. Then you have other modules. NC stands for non-commercial. Non-commercial means there's a restriction on what you can do. You cannot use that for direct monetary uh, um, consideration. So this is not really free. Okay, it's free only for non-commercial. So it's not free culture, and they admit it. But it's used most many times for music, for letting your... So it's something that is free to use, but not that free. The same goes for the fourth one, which is non-derivative. Non-derivative means, you, you remember what derivative is, something that changes, takes some subjects, some artifact, and changes into something else, enlarge, transform, etc. Non-derivative, ND, means you cannot, uh, you can take it as it is and you cannot make any modification. This also conflicts with the idea of freedom because that is, maybe you can, and you can, uh, sometimes you combine, um, many times you combine N, C, and D. The fourth condition is SA. SA stands for share alike. Share alike means copyleft. Actually, copyleft most of the time can be translated into share alike. Say inbound equals uh, outbound. The same goes for this. For this, all derivatives of the creative content must be uh, uh, licensed under the same conditions as this one. Okay. So this is uh, they, they can be combined. They are modules, but only to some extent. Uh, so there are all some, 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 some combinations are impossible, but all in all, you have seven different conditions. So the mix and match is limited. There is one more with the commons, which is for which is called CC0 or CC-0 or CC0 in the world. This is another license, more, more recent, always by Creative Commons, that creates a situation as close as possible to public domain. Public domain means everything is free for everybody else. That is a, diff a situation very difficult to, to obtain. It's not sufficient um, in many jurisdictions to say, oh, I don't want anything, just keep it. You must be some do something to achieve the same situation. So CC0 is a complete waiver, the largest waiver as possible. Sometimes, sometimes though, you cannot even waive your own rights. This is uh, counterintuitive, but it's true. So in Germany, in other places, you cannot just entirely with, uh, uh, renounce your, your rights. So these are the licenses that I would use for any kind of creative content. Then we have open data. Open data uh, is based on another right, which is the right of the maker. Somebody has made a, uh, an investment on creating a database collecting, presenting, and, 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 and validating data. And this is uh, it's a big thing for government, especially, but also for company, it means that you put your data available to uh, other people. Of course, licensing is one way to make open data. Uh, is, uh, is one condition for making this open requires that data are uh, reserved, are controlled in, in some way in the first place. But uh, when we speak of open data, we need to also consider uh, if they are available in machine readable way, um, the license must be uh, allowing uh, extraction and reuse and so on and so forth. But this is not something I would discuss with for lack of time. If you want, we can dig deeper. Uh, for open data, the license, the, the licensing is very, very, very uh, narrowly uh, available. You have basically two models, two big models. Uh, you can use some licenses, and our Creative Commons also can cover database rights. From uh, I've used that in version three. In version four, it's expressly dealt with by the license. So. Uh, Creative Commons by 4.0 is the license I uh, 
uh, that would fit everybody's uh, uh, everybody's needs in open data. Uh, there must be something else in, in the presentation, but first, it's very important. Don't try to do share alike with data. It doesn't work. Full stop. So this is the kind of and, and unfortunately some some of, some of the other licenses that I use for open data uh, try and reach some kind of, of uh, share like condition which is uh, to me a uh, not really a good idea. So ODBL, IODBL, CLD, these are other licenses. I'm, I'm not digging too deep into that because it's quite complicated. But these are the licenses that are used. The alternative from license or uh, to, to licensing is try not to license, but just waive it. And as I said, CC0 is uh, something which is as close as, as close as possible to public domain. And luckily for data, achieving public domain is possible. So using CC0 would mean just put a label, this is free for, for everything, everybody, no friction, no condition attached, do whatever you want. I don't care. Take it. It's free. Welcome to my part. So these are the two models, and I strongly advise for the second one. If you are in Europe and you're doing scientific research and collect data and, and you're entitled to uh, database protection, use CC0 for your licensing, which means waiver. Oh, OK, please avoid your like. I, I forgot to put this as a separate. And you just use it here. So this was a long story. Uh, uh, I have taken too much of your time. Uh, if you want to dig deeper, of course, self promotion. This is book. This is also available uh, from the internet, so it's not uh, really commercial. If you want to, you, you can uh, dig deeper. And I have written a few, a few articles, and but there are many articles all around. So uh, too much ado for now, and uh, I'm available to take any of your questions. Thank you.